Shall I say? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Namaskar. I, Namrata Bajaj, on behalf of Indrishal University, welcome each and everyone to this pleasant afternoon. And this is yet another webinar series for the welfare of society. Investment in education pays the best interest is the famous quote from Benjamin Franklin, which is very befitting when it comes to disseminating knowledge and that too from Indrishil University through series of webinars. And this is one such webinar. And I'm humbled to welcome today's distinguished speaker who is none other but the globally famed professor, Dr. J.D. Yadav. He's Padam Shri, he's J.C. Bose National Fellow. And again, I welcome our provost, Dr. J.S. Yadav, who is again a very noted scientist in chemistry. He's yet to join us. I also welcome Dr. Bharti Dave. She's Dean School of Science in the Shiv University. I welcome Dr. Amish Vyas, who is Dean School of Engineering at Indrashil University. I'm very happy to welcome all the participants for this webinar, wherein the seamless and uh, so many opportunities, plethora of opportunities in the profession of chemical engineering will be shared with you all with the help of Emeritus Professor of Eminence, Professor Dr. J.D. Yadav. And he's an alchemist. I must say he's an alchemist with the intellect. Uh, with his intellect, he has done magics in the field of engineering, uh, uh, chemical engineering. And with this, I invite now Dr. Bharti Dave for giving a quick glance of Indrashil University through a PowerPoint presentation. Over to Dr. Bharti. Madam, please. Conduct uh, first slide, please. So very good uh, evening to Professor Yadav, our Professor Dr. J. S. Yadav, Amish Bhai, Namrata Madam, and each and every participant. To just give you a brief of our university, Indrashil University, uh, the our source of inspiration was Sri Indravadan Bhai A. A. Modi, who was the founder chairman of Cadillac Pharmaceuticals Limited, and uh, everybody knows he was popularly known as the Medicine Man of India. Besides this, he was a very generous and humble person and he truly believed that this medicines should be affordable and sh it should reach to the masses of our country. And it is based on this particular uh, objective that Cadillac Pharmaceuticals is working on. So Indrashil University was established as a philanthropic initiative of our beloved founding chancellor, Dr. Rajiv I. Modi, in loving memory of his parents, Sri Indravadan Pai Ambalal Modi and Srimati Sheila Ben Modi. They laid the foundation stone of Cadillac Pharmaceuticals Limited in 1951. If we see to the success story of Cadillac Pharmaceuticals Limited, initially when it was established in 1951, it was established in one small room of Hasot village in Bharuch district. Sri Indravadan Bhai Modi used to move around on a bicycle, marketing and selling his products. Sri Mati Sheila Ben Modi, his wife, was the first employee of Cadillac Pharmaceuticals Limited. And to honor the legacy of care and compassion, the university's governing Modi and Sri Rajiv Modi are determined to holistically transform and develop this university into a hallmark of global academic excellence. Next. If we see to the success milestones of a university, as I've already told you, it was established by Cadillac Pharmaceuticals Limited in 1951. Cadillac Pharmaceuticals Limited is one of the largest privately held pharmaceutical company of India. It has now its presence felt in 90 different countries with over 10,000 employees. And it was in 2016 that Cadillac Pharmaceuticals Limited established Sri Saraswati Education Foundation. But in 2018, the foundation of Indrashil University has been, had been laid down as the first life sciences 
university of our country seeing to the success of a university you can see the ladder of success of a university it was in 2019 that uh, niti ayog a government of india supported us with atal incubation center with its flagship program to encourage youth of our country to initiate startup and become future entrepreneurs of our country and it was in 2019 20 that indrashil innovative foundation had been set up exclusively supported by government of gujarat next the success of any university or any institute as you very well know depends on the leader who guides the university likewise we have dr j s yadav who is the mentor of the entire indrashil university he is the provost and he is the director of research of our university he he was the former director of indian institute of chemical technology hyderabad he has several awards to his credit the list is exhaustive but to name a few and if i name the two most highest awards in science given by our country one of which is shanti swarup bhatnagar fellow he has been awarded and he has also been acclaimed with jesse bose national fellow if you see to his research credentials he has 150 plus patents to his credit 1400 publications 250 phd students and we still have 11 students who are working with him for phd and he has about 27000 citations so you can just understand the academic excellence of our university next what we offer at indrashil university is academic excellence as shri indravadan bhai modi truly believed that it is research and innovation which would create a benchmark in the indian education system and likewise at indrashil university we focus both on teaching and research as our university is supported by cadilla pharmaceuticals our in- curriculum is tailored based on the requirements of the industry and we what we give to the students is extensive industrial exposure both in terms of credited internship programs as well as regular industry visits at least once per month we help the students to place them for their in, uh, internship programs either in industries csir labs etc we help them for their placements and we focus on 360 degrees development of the students you can consider it as overall development of the students both in terms of curricular as well as extra curricular activities and we focus on global education standards next under the umbrella of indrashil university we have school of engineering as well as school of science school of engineering offers btech in computer science and engineering btech in mechanical engineering btech in chemical and biochemical engineering we in under school of science we have we offer bsc honors in chemistry our university in gujarat is the first university to offer honors degree at an undergraduate level so we have bsc honors in chemistry we offer bsc honors in biosciences we offer ms in chemistry msc in animal biology msc in microbiology and phd in both the programs we have international collaborations which we have recently entered into one of which is sacred heart university usa the skeji university usa as well as new castle university australia this at present the international collaboration it is with students of computer science and engineering where, can, where they can avail the dual degree program where they can get a degree both from foreign university as well as indrashil university and the scheme which we would be following is 3 plus 1 three years at indrashil university one year at international university and likewise they would earn dual degrees next school of engineering offers btech in computer science and engineering mechanical engineering as well as chemical and biochemical engineering and with this we offer minor specializations in big data and data science cyber security embedded systems and iot machine learning artificial intelligence in mechanical engineering we offer automation and robotics we offer mechatronics advanced manufacturing design engineering automobile thermal engineering and the school of chemical and biochemical engineering we offer bioprocess engineering environmental science and sustainability process modeling and optimization micro and nano fluidics as micro specializations next uh, as you very well know 
the national education policy which has been announced recently has extensively stressed on skill development education to the students and we at indrashil university offer extensive experimental learning and for this we have an extremely sophisticated state of the art infrastructure laboratory facilities we have about 7 to 8 msc laboratories and we have a number of research laboratories these research laboratories are supported with high throughput instruments as gcms we have hplc a number of them we have tlc we have fti spectroscopy we have ir spectroscopy we have microbiology lab in biosciences cell biology laboratory all these laboratories also are supported with very good instruments as you can say we have a number of refrigerated centrifuges mini centrifuges thermal cycler a carl fischer titrators etc next one of the very sophisticated instrument that we have procured recently is nuclear magnetic resonance nmr uh, ours is the first university in gujarat to have nmr to be available both to master student as well as research scholars as you all very well know this nmr would give you the uh, quality control quality of the sample the purity of the sample you can determine its molecular structure etc and this is available both to msc as well as research scholars next the cost itself is around 4.5 to 5 crores and that is why i have said kavars is the first university to have nmr to be available to the students we have entered into mous with a number of industries where we have industry academia linkages which is the need of the present time so cadilla pharmaceuticals is our parent uh, industry we have entered into collaborations with datawise cii entrepreneurship development institute of india national chemical laboratory pune we ha have entered into collaboration with indian institute of chemical technology hyderabad karnavati central salt and marine chemicals research institute bhavnagar a number of industries which are even not mentioned over here next slide please our mou focused activity is towards industry programs faculty training arranging guest lectures from their universities from other institutes regarding research regarding setting up of iot and augmented reality laboratories establishing center of excellence for skill development and industry specific course curriculum next slide please so what you see, what we see over here is a number of pictures with states our students have gone for industrial uh, internship programs you have industry experts explaining to the students as to what are the requirements of the chemical industry what should the students uh, do for entering into this industries we uh, carry out at least one industrial visit per month both for school of engineering as well as school of science and wherein after the industrial visit the students need to prepare a report next slide please our university offers a number of curricular activities as we excel with respect to sports we carry out various cultural activities we have an extensive uh, uh, playgrounds once you enter into the university you would find that it has a lush green campus with a number of uh, sports ground for cricket for football etc uh, you can see the girls participating over here girls and boys participating over here in various cultural programs next slide please so as i've told you to support startup and entrepreneurship for future entrepreneurs of our country we have atal incubation center at our university and we have established indrashil innovative foundation atal incubation center has been supported by niti aayog government of india whereas indrashil innovative foundation has been supported by government of gujarat with its ssip policy student startup and innovation policy what we offer in under both this programs is next slide please in terms of incubation we support to the students ss they would have ss to the world class r and d laboratories we provide dedicated office and laboratory space we provide 50 lakh kick start support we have a provision of rupees 2 crore seed fund support we offer hand holding by renowned mentors from the industry government departments agency r and d labs etc both private as well as public we provide free network access 
to from various industries, financial institution, industry leaders, investors, etc. And we support extensive support, all round support for taking up for taking startup to a sustainable business. Next. So in case of any queries, as I told you, you can visit our website. And I usually tell to the students, okay, whenever you search for any institute, higher education institute for your studies, you should always look into four specific criteria. The first criteria that you should look into is, we should always have a strong and well-to-do management system. We should have, uh, you can say highly qualified faculty. We should have uh, extremely highly sophisticated straight of the art infrastructure laboratories. And you should also see to what the university offers you in terms of placement. So Indrashil University, based on all these slides, you would come to know, you have already known, okay, we satisfy all the four criteria. And it would be a pleasure uh, studying in Indrashil University. We offer you extensive academic and research excellence at a very affordable price. So if you want any more details, you can visit us at our website www.indrashiluniversity.edu.in. We have a website for our industry. You can also email us at the email over, over there given, and you can even call the person who is concerned. With this, I end my short presentation on IU. Thanks a lot, Madam. Thank you. Over to Madam. Thank Namaste. you, Madam. Thank you, Madam, for this uh, brief introduction of IU. Uh, it's turn now to introduce our distinguished speaker, Padmashree. Professor Dr. J.D. Yadav. And for this, he has a very impressive background, in fact. So for this, I invite Dr. Amish Vyas, Dean School of Engineering, to give a brief credential of SIRS because <clears throat> his impressive uh, credentials may be running into 20 pages or more also. So over to Amish, sir. sir please. Yeah, good evening, all, and thank you, Namrata, madam. In fact, it is a matter of proud uh, for me to introduce uh, Professor Ganpati D. Yadav, G.D. Yadav, sir. Uh, I have special personal connection with him, and I'm thankful to him also because my PhD is just because of him. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, I, I'm just getting a chance or an opportunity to introduce him. He's an Emirate Professor of uh, Eminence uh, at uh, ICT. He is a J.C. Bose National Fellow from the government of India. He is a former vice chancellor and RT Modi distinguished professor and Tata Chemicals Darbari Seth distinguished professor of innovation and leadership at ICT Mumbai. <clears throat> Above all, he is a Padmasri awardee. So congratulations sir for that. <clears throat> and uh, he is just, if, if I list down the credentials, it will take as Namrata Mem said more than 20 pages. I will try to make it in a brief uh, he is a conjoint professor at University of Newcastle, Australia. He is an adjunct professor, University of Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatoon, Canada. He is an adjunct professor, RMIT University, Melbourne. Uh, uh, he is also a founding chair of ACS India International Chapter. He is a president of Maharashtra Academy of Sciences. He is a formal president of Catalysis Society of India. He is a formal pro president of Indian Institute of Chemical Engineer. He is a council member of Indian National Science Academy uh, from 2019 onwards. Uh, what I can say that Professor G.D. Adav is one of the top most highly prolific and accomplished engineering scientist in India. He is internationally recognized by many prestigious and rare awards as an academician, research and innovator, including his seminal contributions to education, research and innovation in green chemistry and engineering, catalysis, chemical engineering, energy engineering, biotechnology, nanotechnology, and development of clean and green technology. So no, no area of chemical engineering left behind. And he is a kind of complete chemical engineer and very rare combination of researcher come very good teacher, rather excellent teacher, I should say. Uh, for 10.5 years, he served as a founding vice chancellor and RT Modi distinguished professor and Tata Chemical Darbar is a distinguished professor of leadership and innovation at the Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai, which is a deemed to be university having elite status and center of excellence given by state assembly on par with IITs, IISCs, IISCRS. He currently holds the title of Emirate, uh, 
Emirate Professor of Eminence and JC was National Fellow in ICT. He serves as the adjunct professor at various uh, international universities, as I men uh, mentioned earlier. And he was confirmed Padma Sri, the fourth highest civilian honor by the President of India in 2016 for his outstanding contribution to science and engineering. He has been recipient of two honorary doctorates, BSc Honorable Koza DYPU and D Engineering Honorable Koza NIT Agartala as the Vice Chancellor he created many records. Under his dynamic leadership, ICT made phenomenal progress having been declared as category one institute and having started 23 new academic programs five new departments and several centers of excellence and establishment of two off campuses in Bhubaneswar with total support of IOCL and in Marathwada with total support of government of Maharashtra and collected phenomenal fund. Even he has personally won over 125 national and international honor awards, fellowships, editorships, several lifetime achievement awards, by prestigious industrial organization. He is an elected fellow of Indian National Science Academy, Indian Academy of Sciences, National Academy of Sciences India, Indian National Academy of Engineering, as well as the World Academy of Sciences, Preste TWS. He is a fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry UK, Institution of Chemical Engineers UK, Indian Institute of Chemical Engineers, Indian Chemical Society, Indian Society for Technical Education, among others. His research productivity is phenomenal. He has guided more than 100 doctoral candidates and 115 master thesis, which is the first record in ICT for any engineering professor in India. Besides, he has supervised 37 postdoctoral fellows, several summer fellows and research staff. And if I talk about the publications, then more than 450 original research paper 115 National and PCT patterns. He has 70 already granted. Three books. His H index is 57, I10 index 265, and more than 12,000 citations in journal, patterns, books, and monograms. So he is actively involved in guiding doctoral students, patenting, publishing, consulting, and transferring technology to the industry. So the list is a very big list to his credentials. Even he has served as a chairman, member of election committee, selection committees for directors of many CSIR labs. Even he has served as independent director on four renowned public limited companies, RT Industries Limited, Godrej Industries Limited, Make Money Organic Limited, Bagheria Chemicals Limited, and one private limited company, Clean Science and Technology, Private Limited. He is also a member of Apex Council of Indian Oil, R&D, Export Advisory Committee, ONGC Energy Center. A list is very long. He is also chairman of DST's National Expert Advisory Committee on Innovation, Incubation, and Technology Enterprise. He is a member of advisory and screening committee of the Common Research and Technology Development Hubs for DSIR, chairman of PSC of International Programs in Chemical Sciences and Engineering, DST and chairman, expert committee, waste management technology, DST, he had honor of addressing three convocations of renowned university. And above all, even after all these things, it is very surprising to know that he is fond of literature, etymology, and Sanskrit. And the ICT's university song is written by him. Many congratulations to you, sir. There are 47 video clips, including documentaries on his life on the YouTube. Sir, this is a very brief. I tried to justify my job, but uh, it is very difficult to uh, describe your credentials. Uh, most welcome, sir. And uh, we are very lucky enough and fortunate enough to have you on the board, sir. Thank you very much. Most welcome to Indrasil University and this webinar, sir. Sir, please unmute yourself. I just got... Uh, sir, Yadav, sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, I have done it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yadav, sir, has, yes, he has just joined. That is what we were waiting for, and he has oh, a right message also. Okay. So over How to are you, other, my brother? I'm, I'm <laughs> fine, fine. Now you go ahead. He has given the far better introduction than me. Okay, go ahead, please. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. So, uh, are you able to see my presentation? Yes, yes sir. I'm able to see. 
Okay, so thank you, uh, all of you. I must thank uh, Dr. Jayesh Yadav for his kindness in inviting me to address uh, the students. And uh, one of the things he said, can you excite our chemical engineering students? And I said, why not? I can excite anybody for that matter. And so I chose a very provocative title, the versatility and excitement of chemical engineering, which is a seamless and accommodative profession. And as I go along, you will know why I chose this title. So with uh, this, uh, I would like to also pay my tributes to Sri Yendrabodhan Modi, who was ICT's distinguished alumnus, uh, one of the, you know, person from pharmaceutical uh, department, along with uh, Anji Reddy and uh, you know, A.V. Ramarao, who are very well known for their contributions. and. Um, Indravadan Modi is really remembered for his uh, important contributions uh, to, to research and innovation. And of course, the Cadilla group is his creation. So, uh, you know, in our uh, philosophy, particularly the Hindu philosophy, we always talk of a trinity. And what is that trinity? Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. And as far as science, engineering, and technology is concerned, our you know, new trinity, change, challenge, and opportunity. And so what it means that you cannot remain stagnant and, you know, carry on the same things uh, and you have to change uh, as you go along. And that is the example is of a butterfly. Depending on circumstances, it changes its colors. So have you done it? Have we done it in our profession? And I will talk about chemical engineering per se. Or for example, you find that you have been constrained, you know, maybe because your syllabus is not good, or you find that students are not getting attracted to your profession. That means you have to have some innovative way. So this is the way you can't stay with, you know, all, all these fish. And so therefore you have to jump to another world. And that is what I'm going to show you. And of course you have to take risk. So I was very happy to note that you have been doing this internship so when I started for chemical engineering program in ICT, the five-year, you know, integrated master's program, which we started at, you know, Bhuneshwar and Maratwada, uh, these are unique because they are, they are trimester systems and every four months, the student goes to industry. And so he has six trimesters in industry and nine trimesters on the campus and he gets a degree and including he gets, a, you know, honors degree. Uh, where if he does some research on the campus. So that is a unique program. We also started executive tech for, you know, industry people. So that was an opportunity for me. So what they are talking about in national education policy, I had already practiced. So what is this challenge? We live in a materialistic world and need energy in every form to, to survive and progress. Never have so many compelling technological problems have occupied positions of prominence in our system of values. Every moment something happens unexpectedly, posing a new challenge. And remember in the word challenge, there is a change as well. It is accommodates that. Coronavirus uh, changed everything. The way we think, live, meet, behave, <clears throat> or rejoice. None of this was imagined a year ago. Constantly on our minds is the fear of the unknown and the uncertain future in every activity. A tiny creature, if you may, has held the world to the ransom with devastating effect. <coughs> so this is where we invoke God. We say, oh, God, help me. Corona is there and this and that. So why do we say God? So that means we invoke God at the time of difficulty. Of course, we want peace, peace of mind. We want peace in the world. We want prosperity. We want luxury. And God is omnipotent and omnipresent, all inclusive, all accommodative, all pervasive. So if I go by that definition, I said God is a chemical engineer. Now, this provocative statement I made on 14 February 2001 as the president of Indian Institute of Chemical Engineers in Bhuneshwar. And there was a seminar, two day seminar arranged by Industries Association on chemical industry. And for that particular seminar, the chief secretary of the state government, 
was the chief guest. And since I was the president, I had the honor of addressing them at the end. And the chief secretary made a very provocative statement. And what he said, he said, they don't want chemical and allied industry, and they want only cyber. And so Bhuvaneshwar will be called cyberation. Then I stopped and I said, wait a minute, sir. If you think that uh, chemistry is not required, chemicals are not required, then you will have to go to Stone Age and hide your modesty with leaves. And I will show you everything is related to chemicals. Of course, we don't want polluting and disastrous industry. We want a very nice, you know, green chemical industry. And I explained to them and I said, oh, so much so God is a chemical engineer. And the next day in the local newspaper, the New Indian Express, there was a headline, a professor from UDCT, that time ICT was UDCT, he's saying that God is a chemical engineer. And so this became a headline. So our students in ICT heard that and they printed t-shirt with God is a chemical engineer. And they became very happy that, okay, at least somebody is supporting. And that time where people were going for all sci computer science and IT related uh, courses. So then I said, oh, wait a minute, God is a chemical engineer, but chemical engineers are not gods. And I, I <laughs> deflated their ego. And on this, there was a TED talk and you can see this link I have given. It is still there, this uh, link where you can see this was a TEDx program arranged by ICT students. And that was in 2016. And you can listen to my lecture where I've given very humorous anecdotes and why I call God as a chemical engineer. Okay, so why I call it? Because chemical engineering works on you know, systems which are megascopic, mesoscopic, microscopic, uh, you know, nanoscopic and atmospheric, okay? And so I'm just one minute, one minute, I just. Uh, and, uh, and so who is doing that? That is God's job, okay? That is what is happening, that is God's job. Uh, and uh, and so what God does, it cares for life processes, it cares for molecular matter, cares for our planet, cares for our energy. So, so what it means, God is a molecular engineer. And so then I made another uh, uh, lecture and that is where I said, just one minute. Sorry. So, uh, so this, this is what I had said. Is there any beauty, charm, and challenge in chemical engineering? And this is what. I said, I must, uh, you know, entice students and those who practice this. So in with reference to that, uh, I said, what is chemical engineering and definition of chemical engineering? Uh, and I must say that it is true that chemical engineers are compatible with chemistry, but they do much more with this knowledge than just make chemicals. In fact, the term chemical engineer is not even intended to describe the type of work a chemical engineer performs. Instead, it is meant to reveal what makes the field different from other branches of engineering. And so then we can go ahead and say, what is chemical engineering? Chemical engineering enjoys a special and critical place in scientific and engineering discipline. Chemical engineering is highly science-based. So unless you know very good chemistry, physics, mathematics, and biology, you cannot be successful in chemical engineering today's world. So, and at the same time, it is highly accommodative. And that is what my title says. And I will show you some of the things. And chemical engineering is truly versatile discipline. And in other words, you can do somebody else's job. You can do mechanical engineer job. You can do computer engineer job. But they cannot do in your job because you deal with chemistry, which is your soul. And chemical engineers, you know, they play in the world of atoms, molecular, and molecular transformations. But beyond this, there is something which is called system in chemical engineering. We deal with systems. 
and we can analyze any problem. I can analyze any problem in daily life by using chemical engineering principles. And this is defined through system. And what is that? So I can give you some examples. So chemical engineering deals with analysis of red processes. The red could be a physical process. It could be a chemical process, biological process, or even atomic process. So what it means is we deal with red processes. And these reds happen in a system. And that is what we are. So analysis of system and system boundary is a job of chemical engineering. In other words, we deal with space and time. Suppose, and in that, if you want to do, then we also have this container, a vessel or a column. And that could be a size of a few, you know, microns, few atoms to atmosphere. So from atom to atmosphere, chemical engineering principles can be applied and we can choose a system and apply where material and energy goes in and, and goes out. And so this is very important. So this is the flow of material and energy in particular system, whatever we choose. And that is why chemical engineering principles can be applied to any other discipline, no matter what we do. So in fact, in a layman's language, I call chemical engineering as a multilingual entity. It means it can speak many other languages fluently. And so this is what it is. And we, we should we respect that. So a chemical engineers can track with anybody with all branches of science, engineering, mathematics, medicine, and technology. That is the beauty. And that is why I gave this provocative title that time, God is a chemical engineer. So now look at this. These are some of the examples taken from industry across all spectra, whether it is a pharmaceutical industry or an intermediate industry, a dye stuff or polymer, or you know, biochemical biotechnology or a human body. You can see that all these images are included in this slide. And this slide I have displayed in ICT, just to make students aware of what chemical engineers do and the versatility of this particular slide is there. I designed this slide myself. So I ask this question to people who don't understand. In fact, I used to say this jokingly, that if there is a, you know, Swayamvar, like you watch Ramayana and Mahabharata, and you have seen that Swayamvar, where the, the bride has a choice of choosing the husband, the groom from a number of people. And you'll see how some of those fellows were disappointed in Ramayana and Mahabharata. Now I say in today's context, supposing there is a Swayamva, the place where you choose your groom, I can assure you that, and if you have a least long list of electrical, mechanical, civil, all those guys sitting there, nobody will marry a chemical engineer, okay? Or for that matter, chemist, because they think these fellows are dirty, they don't know what they are doing, okay? But on the other hand, very interestingly, analysis shows that chemical engineers marriages are more stable in the whole world. So this is, that means chemical engineers are not only academic, they can accommodate their wife's temper and also you can handle the case and the problems. So chemical engineers are very accommodated and patient guys, I would say. So I ask this question, how did you think you were beginning your day today, common person? And I show all these things, you know, they are, they are looking at these things daily in their home. But these days, what happens? Daily in the morning, majority of the fellows pick up the mobile phone. They don't go to the deity to worship and see if there is any missed call or a WhatsApp message from some group. That is what they do. And so the question is, how did it happen? With that mobile phone, a gift of chemical and allied industry? The answer is yes. There are more than 20 different chemicals, polymers, smart things which are used there, but people don't give credit to this. So, and then we go to the Olympics. Look at the Olympics. What is the motto of the Olympic movement and why so many records are broken every uh, Olympic? And think of the equipment and attire of players and the synthetic materials and turfs and all that. Everything what you see is a creation of chemistry and for that matter, a creation of chemical industry, allied industry. So you see this, the motto of Olympic industry movement is CTS, ITS, FATIS, which is a Greek word, means faster, higher, stronger. Nothing of this would have been possible if those materials, now you look at the materials, you know, the resistance is eliminated. They are made lighter. The bulk density is very, very low. 
and they can give you speed. They can give you, make you feel lighter and comfortable. There is no sweat. So all these things, if you look at the products in this Olympic moments, how are they made? Look at the synthetic materials, the polymers, the shoes and the dresses, synthetic textiles and the drugs and pharmaceuticals they use. Sometimes they use the you know, drugs for you know, increasing their strength. So that is bad thing, but good thing. Colors, the pigments, perfumes, flavors, rubbers, elastomers, inorganics, all sorts of gadgets which are used there, whether they are computers, air purifiers, sanitizers, internet, they use sensors, foods, food packaging, pure water and beverages, shoes, rackets, balls, goggles, lubricants, etc., etc. The list is long. These are all solid materials and the liquids, including perfumes and what. How are they made? The question is. Can you show any three man-made materials or products without the use of chemicals? Okay, show it. Uh, so look around in your uh, in your office. And so that is what it means. So you are maybe out this chair of this kind, or you, you are using the mask these days. Okay, maybe your exotic mask, very highly attractive mask. Do you use this? And how are they made? If you can show any of these made them made without chemicals, I will give a prize of 100 million pounds. This has been waiting since 2008. Nobody has come forward and shown that anything man-made can be made without use of chemicals. That means chemicals are essential. The production, so chemical engineering is an essential thing. So you cannot show any of those things. So, and in today's world, what is happening because we have so many deaths due to Corona and all that, and we are always listening to news daily. Somebody is dead or somebody is infected, somebody is in the hospital. But as far as science is concerned, the boundaries have disappeared. And there it is science of dead or science of the living. And so you can imagine, so we are only two sciences. Same is the case with engineering now what is happening. And in this regard, we would like to look at some of the you know, buzzwords which are used today's context. Energy, water, food, affordable healthcare, environment. This is, these are the buzzwords in newspaper or television. Carbon footprint, industry and infrastructure, sustainable development, GDP. GDP every day you hear. So if you hear all these things, and then also we hear about the effect of COVID on economy and all those issues. So what COVID has done, now look at the COVID fallout and the opportunities which has brought to us. The energy scenario across the globe has become topsy-turvy. And nobody had heard negative price of oil. It happened on, particularly on 10th of April, 2020. Baffingly, it happened and slowly recovered to another level. The so-called Brent crude oil spot prices average about $18 per barrel in April. And unless they rise to about $45 per barrel, the industry will not survive. That is what some of the pundits are saying. And add to that the price war between Saudi Arabia and Russia, which had already brought down the prices to low. And in Corona had complicated all this further. So, and the very important, the American fracking industry. The fracking industry was almost going to be extinct and seven of these most important companies in Texas already cut $7.6 billion from their budget because of COVID. And the Energy Information Association of the United States, their predictions are quite hazy. And what they say that the Brent crude oil will increase to about $32 per barrel during this half. Uh, so it is already happened and it will go to about $48 per average and it will reach about $54. And this is expected on the worldwide consumption of about 97.4 million barrels per day consumption. During COVID, during April, May, that had gone down to something like 84. So you can imagine the, the impact on this industry. So what we are seeing looking at this is another context, and that is the context of health and the healthcare industry and the so-called organic chemical industry. So look at around 1080. 1080, which is over here, the population of the world had gone down to almost you know, 500 
million only. And almost 67 to 70 percent of people in United in the Europe died of the so-called Black Death or bubonic plague, which is now worried now. The plague has been worried, like the Spanish plague and plague and all. In fact, that plague in 1897 was so devastating in India. I know from our my own family, 70 percent of our people died, except my father my grandmother and his brother, everybody died. And so we know that it is devastating. So what happened by 1856, you go from here, and 1856 is William Perkins synthesis of Mao, the dye. He wanted to make quinine, but instead got Mao. He was just 18 year old lad, and he became the first scientist entrepreneur. And since that, there is no looking back. And you see that there is a steep rise in population. And we don't know what will be the population in the year 2100. Will it be 14 billion or 10 billion or 7 billion? There are so many models. And how did it happen? It is because of the chemicals, the chemical and allied industry, so new type of antibiotics, new types of drugs, so will it be sustainable? That is another issue. Can we feed this population? Can we provide shelter for them? And what will be their energy needs? And this is where we must look at the sustainable development goals, where we talk about no poverty, zero hunger by 2030, good health, quality education, gender equality, clean water, affordable, affordable clean energy, decent work, industry, innovation and infrastructure. This is what I will concentrate upon. And all these issues are there. So, and add to that the grand challenges for engineering, which were, you know, uh, made out in a report by American, the US Academy of Engineering, National Academy of Engineering. What are those challenges? Make solar energy economical. And now Gujarat is a good example. Now we, India is the, you know, leader of this global solar alliance, then manage the nitrogen cycle because nitrogen fixation has been the greatest job for mankind. And it, it is where chemical industry added the, the hover wash process of nitrogen fixation, greatest contribution to mankind. That is why it recovered, you know, led to all this progress. Advanced health informatics, preventing nuclear terror, advanced personalized learning. And now we are doing this because of this COVID. Uh, provide energy from fusion. This is another goal. Provide access to clean water. Engineer the better medicines. Secure fiber space. Engineer the tools of scientific discovery. Develop carbon sequestration methods. Restore and improve urban infrastructure. We must engineer the brain. If you understand brain, everything is will be very easy and enhance the virtual reality. These are the challenges. Believe me, in all these challenges, materials play a very important and these materials synthesized through chemical means so this is very interesting so so the contributions of chemical and allied industry to every facet of modern society look at covid and chemical engineering i can give dozens of examples where covid had provided an opportunity to chemical engineering professionals to do it and do whether it is ppe or anything else are you know taking care of the problems of pollution when this biomedical waste is you know dumped then we also know the phenomenal increasing life expectation because of pharmaceuticals and here i want to make a very interesting submission that in the year 1900 the average life expectancy of indian male was 38 years and indian females were 43 years in fact, they became grandmothers at the age of 30 because they used to get married at the age of 13, 14. Today, the life expectancy of Indian male has gone to 68 and females 73 or 74. In other words, what it means, the life expectancy is because of new types of drugs, new type of lifestyle, where we luxury, comfort, the kind of fuels and energy we get. And now we are talking of instant communication, gratification, instant food and whatnot. And very interestingly, the ladies always live longer. Huh? So they should pat, pat on their back because they have a better genetic makeup than the male folks. Okay, you will see if you look at the census data, there are more number of widows than widowers. Ladies live without husband, but husbands cannot live without wife. 
they are so spoiled they are they are always enjoying life you only read newspaper and not do any household work now because of corona at least some husbands have been working but most of the time they never work so this is a fact of the matter so so chemical industry is pervasive and so is chemical engineering and i already mentioned not a single product can be made without chemicals so this is my favorite slide because once we say we look at the the crude oil or a coal or natural gas and what we do we have the raw materials very simple petroleum natural gas and we will have air and maybe sulfur through sulfur dioxide and we have the commodity chemicals so called bulk chemicals and the secondary commodity chemicals and the tertiary chemicals and the intermediates and finished products and what the janta sees is the finished product whether that textiles say food supply transportation housing recreation communications health and ig they don't see what is there beyond that before that and this is where chemical engineering comes into picture and this is what we have to show to the world that so without that you cannot do and the beauty is that i said chemistry is the soul of chemical engineering and the beauty and charm of chemistry is that the attributes that perhaps most distinguishes chemistry from the rest of the sciences is the ability of chemists to control the structure of matter at the molecular level from complex natural products like vancomycin to nanoparticles and whole genomes and this language is understood by chemical engineers so that is the beauty of it and since i said it is materials world what sort of materials we made with the help of chemistry and then we engineer them so regular materials which you then your functional materials now we can make functional materials like you will you know for ladies you may have only one sari you have the nanoparticles on that in the morning it looks yellow in the evening it looks red at the same time there is no sweat no smell of sweat husbands will be very happy if their wife buys only one sari but this is the importance of this nanotechnology where we can use chemistry so we make smart materials materials which can smile which can you know wine and what not it's very interesting or we have engineering materials so we deal with materials so material chemistry is a very very important subject and so is chemical engineering associated with that and so what do we predict the future it is very difficult the future cannot be predicted by any of these means yes so we will have a lot of intervention of digital technology in chemical engineering and chemical industry and so i'm going to give a few examples of this how these all these molecule structures i'm showing how they have helped you know this world so and very interestingly because some of these boys or girls who are joined your chemical engineering programs they should know that this is the statistics from america because we like american statistics indian statistics doesn't make any sense because people say what is in america so let us give american statistics look at the employment all sorts of employment which is given here and the industrial employment of chemical like business services engineering services research design biotechnology pulp paper materials food fuels everything you take it and the highest salary there is given to chemical engineers which people will not appreciate that because highest salary is drawn by bs chemical engineers in united states okay then comes mechanical engineers and since we are uh, talking about industry one industry four perhaps you know this industry 1.0 2.0 3.0 4.0 like mechanization and steam engine then the mass production and the electrical energy and automation in computers and now it is cyber physical space and internet of things and networking and all that so where is chemical engineering and chemistry in this so i will show you that also so industry four means the increasing convergence of digital physical and biological assets so which is known as industry four the fourth industrial revolution and you see on the right hand side many things internet of things you can sit at home and do things okay you are big data analysis you are augmented reality you do simulation all those cloud computing so people are enamored by that but they cannot be done without materials you require very high quality pure material so you require good separation techniques good synthetic chemistry to make them purify them and all that so in that 
So industry for technologies like sensors, industrial internet of things, virtual reality simulation are transforming manufacturing by enabling the generation and analysis of digital data. So data science has become, and rightly so, you have the data science in your university. So we can make smart products, smart processes, smart supply chains. So this is where very interesting. So whether it is legal, energy and utilities, hospitality, medical, financial, manufacturing, all these things are affected by digital you know, the, uh, networks. So, and one of the things I said is health. Can you predict the pharma industry, future pharma industry by using what is being done now? The answer is no. Many of these things will chemobiological or biochemical. The processes may not be purely chemical or purely biological. There will be a combination of that. Some states may be enzymatic, some state may be biological, some state may be chemical. That includes the catalysis. Okay, so this is the pharma industry because it is billion and billion dollar industry. And we require purified drugs. So the techniques don't change. The chemical engineering principles don't change on separation. Maybe we'll doing molecular separations. They will remain. You will reduce the energy. You will reduce the you know, impurity in the final product. So in the pharma industry, it is the impurity which defines the product rather than the purity. You may have three nines, 0.999 purity, but that what is that 0 0.001 impurity? Because that can be disastrous. So one of my students, I told him, you know, he said, sir, sir, I want to start my industry. I said, start making impurities and you will become rich. And he started about five years back. He is making impurities and everybody is asking him to give that impurity because you have to keep this profile. The pharma fellows have to keep that profile. So impurities matter in pharma industry and obviously sensors in every field. And these sensors, again, chemicals, materials, biological sensors, chemobiological sensors, and they are required in every field. Okay, they are required in every field. So you can imagine that is again a through chemistry. And so in chemical engineering 4.0, I say, the increasing convergence of digital, physical, chemical, and biological phenomena in industrial revolution. And they are creating unprecedented opportunities for chemical engineers. And so, so in my uh, you know, courses in ICT, what I did in the very first year of chemical engineering integrated program, very first trimester, students are taught MSc level analytical chemistry. They are taught artificial intelligence. They are taught programming languages. Okay, R, for instance, or Python. It's not just you know, uh, you know, other uh, thing, but this high-level program. Because if they go to industry after four months, they must know what is happening. And so they are really enjoying this. This so chemical and aligned industry forward will be chemical technology with new reactions and processes which are eco-friendly, safe, and cheap using modern sensor the industrial internet of things, virtual reality in simulation, which is process simulation, process safety are transforming modern manufacturing by enabling the generation and analysis of digital data that supports the development of smarter products, smarter processing and smarter supply chains. So we can see that we learn so-called deep learning is there. Why are we not teaching? So here is one example that material A, B, C goes into the reactor and you have the gas analyzer, actual values, estimated values. This itself, you know, this one example which I've taken, this is a chemical plant, there are 51 types of process data. So if you understand process chemistry, you must also understand the, how to analyze this process data because that is what is happening today. And there are so many simulation softwares. In fact, because of this COVID in ICT, because the students cannot be there in the lab, we are doing virtual experiments. We are designed those virtual experiments so that students get a feeling without being into the, into the laboratory. So you can see that there is huge business here in this. Whether you take refining, you take production, you take development, huge business is there. And so artificial intelligence in agriculture, we can use it. And agriculture requires, you know, so-called fertilizers, you require insecticides, you require pesticides, weedicides and whatnot. not. They are not, they cannot be done without, you know, how are you have to manufacture them? That means chemical engineering is going to be very important. And you see 
the kind of structures which are given here and so we combine biology rna dna etc with chemistry and we create next generation molecules we generate everything and combine with digital data and this is those who have stayed in mumbai do know this is the problem this is the problem this is the problem this is the problem and these are the challenges to sustainability that is population is rising there are growing energy needs growing material needs there is environmental degradation and global warming and toxins in the environment how chemical engineering can help in this and chemical engineering can help in each and every of these problems and when you look at the world population see china is about 19.4% and india is going to take over china by 2030 so you can imagine so we will be hugely populated and this is a real picture train coming from you know rajasthan and gujarat you can see how people are you know sitting on this that means and this is also another picture where ladies are carrying the load on their heads and we have this picture where the lady is also using mobile phone so we have a digital divide and we have this kind of you know drought and at the same time we have flood so we live in the world of oddity so how do you converse this and this is where chemical engineering principles can certainly help but at the same time we are rich people i don't know how many kilos gold this girl is using materialistic world i hope her neck is all right at the end of the ceremony and so this kind of rich people are also there so these undeliverable oddities coexist in india and this is where so you can see the population of the world and you look at the the older people their age is increasing so we will have many more people in 70s 80s 90s like they are in the in japan and usa and some of those uh, siberian countries you can see that and so this is where the matter of sustainability comes into picture can this be sustainable in future what is going to happen to our our crude oil supply or coal and i'm going to talk a little bit about that so at the same time since i mentioned to you that chemical engineering versatile there is a disappearance of boundaries between biology and chemistry why because chemistry serves to provide the interpretation of biological phenomena in terms of molecular structure and chemical principles or processes so chemistry actually gives all the inputs to biology so this is what we know that the nobel laureate which was given was obtained afterwards that is this is based on the cells they obey the laws of chemistry the watson and crick when they got this nobel prize so obviously chemistry gives a lot of input and this is where we look at nature and nature will be our guide for many manufacturing so nature has developed both templated and non templated biosynthetic machinery including the ribosome dna and rna polymerases polyketoid and peptide synthesis and metabolic enzymes to make complex molecules with diverse function diverse functions is the very important thing that you may have the same material but you have diverse functionality like same drug can be used for different things depending on how you stimulate it so the nature's chemical factories we know there are many living organisms which carry remarkable array of complex functions using natural molecules and molecular assemblies ranging from antibiotics and enzymes to the ribosome and polysynthetic synthesis so chemistry is increasingly shifting from structure to function chemists will need to develop better strategy to efficiently generate molecules and systems of molecules with desired physical chemical or biological properties in order to meet the biomedical energy and environmental needs of future and this is the input which will be given to chemical engineering to convert that into in you know, a reality and so there is a marriage of this biosynthetic machinery with traditional synthetic approaches and this is where improved strategies are required for generation of molecules with defined physical chemical and biological properties and we have already said this and so you imagine these molecules these are you know very interesting uh, compounds they do not exist in nature that means man has beaten nature in creating these kind of molecules like there is no carbon silicon bond existing in nature but human beings chemists have synthesized that in the lab of course 
So we can have all sorts of, you know, different sulfur forms of this, you know, con uh, chondritin sulfate are the catalytic antibodies. So what it means, we can have all these approaches for applications in chemical, biological, and material sciences. So we can generate semi-synthetic enzymes, ion channels, DNA-directed chemical synthesis, biosynthesis of proteins and DNAs, DNA or protein template assembly of inorganic and organic materials, combinatorial synthetic strategies inspired by nature, construction of bihydrate thin plants, and use of enzymes is organic synthesis, or generation of orthogonal enzyme inhibitor pairs. And so, you know, perhaps you might have known this, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2016 was given to Savage, Stoddard, and Feringa. And what did they do? They worked on these molecular machines. By building the first mechanically interlocked molecules into moving components like motors and switches, the trial laid the foundations of for what is now Bergeron theory. So molecular machines, chemical engineers can work very well. We have robot molecules. You can see how they work like robots. Are you, so these so-called molecular robots generated in the uh, Lee's group, okay? Molecular syndrome of interleak chains. So you can see that the non-organic chemists can arrange this in a better way. Or you create, recreate the action of ribosome, okay? So in other words, you can see that it is possible to mimic the ribosome, which consists of two DNA pieces. So you can imagine this kind of self assembly and synthesis can be used to make pre-programmed oligomers. So, so you can see this is the so-called schematic as cost-optimized route to drug. Uh, Vardenafil identifies synthetic reactions that span half a century. You can see. So where you use computers, use your knowledge of chemistry, you use our knowledge of engineering, and you simulate on the on, on the screen and make use of this knowledge. So the machine learning accelerate catalytic train spotting. So that means chemical engineers must do more learn machine learning because you can look at this you know metal surfaces and you find out you know what is adsorbate, what is the energy, surface energy, and all those things that we've done. Uh, so machine learning and catalysis is very important. You can use readily available data like density and electronegativity from other metals or bimetals or alloys or you know whatever to predict the D band center for 11 metals and their bimetallic alloys. So in other words, this is simple thing. As chemical engineers, we understand metabolic engineering or biosynthon, uh, chemical catalysis and separation purification. And this is all what you teach in our courses. Now, what you should teach in the principles, whether it is chiral synthesis or catalysis or nanotechnology, crystallization is very important in pharmaceutical industry and so-called polymorphs. So you can see the applications, variety of application. Now they should be part of chemical engineering programs. And they, of course, they might be taught in specialized field like pharmaceutical technology, but chemical engineers, because all these plants are run by chemical engineers. So it is not the pharmaceutical guy may look at only the chemistry part of it, but the technology part is very, very important. So what are these grand challenges in synthesis and manufacture? There are many. So synthesis and manufacture of any new substance by using compact synthesis schemes and processes with high selectivity for the desired product with minimum energy consumption and benign environmental effect. Benign environmental effect because we want eco-friendly technology. Selectivity, we call selectivity engineering as a chemical engineer. So understanding and controlling the reactivity of molecules for all molecular sizes and full range of molecular sizes. So for example, you can do DFT calculations and do the industrial reactor design and catalyst selection for ammonia synthesis. So I won't go into the details of this, but this is just to show you that how the structure and composition of material can be predicted on the computer. And then you can go to the lab and synthesize this and you try to you know, uh, you know, do the experiments based on your, uh, in your uh, computer simulation. Uh, you can design new substances. So design and production new substances and new materials on molecular devices with properties that can be predicted, tailored, or tuned before even production. And so chemistry of life, I told you already that the science of life means science of death, that is death before life and after life. So this is chemistry of life. Understand the chemistry of living systems in detail. It will help us 
in predicting what sort of diseases are going to happen because everywhere it is a structure activity or a functional relationship. So untreatable diseases like development of medicines and therapies that can cure currently untreatable disease, like whether it is Alzheimer, Parkinson, or cancer, or even for that matter, Corona, which we are talking about these days. Self-assembly, very interesting concept. Development of self-assembly as a useful approach to the synthesis and manufacture of complex systems and materials. And so this is, you know, this is just to show you that what can be done. This is a high core chemistry. But this has a lot of interesting thing for chemical engineers, okay, to our understanding the complex chemistry of earth. We are always talking of earth, land, sea, and that so the, the livability of this earth is maintained. New ways of energy generation and storage, unlimited and inexpensive energy, new ways of storing it and transportation. We are talking about hydrogen energy these days. In fact, I'll give a separate lecture on why India should go for hydrogen energy. And so you can see the energy sources, okay? Many sources, solar, PVL, et cetera, and alternate energy pricing. You see solar energy pricing is coming down. Now it is like rupees two point some 40 paise or something like that. Our processing of energy and natural resources, chemical engineers can do it. Design of inexpensive, high energy density, quickly rechargeable storage battery. Batteries, a lot of chemical. My own son is, involved in doing this battery research in New York and develop so many interesting batteries and they're being commercialized. So you can imagine battery, uh, development of practical and less expensive, less expensive and more stable fuel cells with improved membranes. So membrane research, chemical engineers, new types of membranes, synthesis of membranes, catalysts, electrodes, electrolytes, name it. Our solar fuel cells, our self-optimizing systems, green chemistry and engineering, I need not talk about it. And so then, see, by 2054, we will not have any crude oil left. So what are you going to do? In other words, we must have something called biorefinery cancer. Like we go to the renewable resources. They take biomass, sugar platform, syngas platform, or combine heat and power. Once you have sugar, you can go to fuels, chemicals, materials, or you have you know, so-called fissure trough synthesis when you have syngas. So all these things are there, in fact, we wrote a paper which is just being accepted last week that what we are saying, I hope this, that letter paper, uh, paper is going to create a lot of uh, heat. We say that biomass should not be used for biofuels. We say biomass should be used for chemicals and materials. And this is our uh, thesis. And we have shown it through calculations why biomass should not be used for biofuels. So so-called ethanol, bioethanol, which in fact I champion in ICD according to me, is becoming an outdated idea. So green chemistry, we apply to biomass, new extraction technology, supercritical fluids, subcritical water, micro aqueous extraction, okay, fundamental chemical studies on reactions of biomass in clean solvent, oxygen. And when you deal with biomass, hydrogenation and oxidation are the two reactions which will be very important. And electrochemistry, of course, for depolymerization and oxidation. So biotechnology for biomass conversion, biofuels, and I already told you about the bio, bio refinery concept. So here bio pyrolysis of heterogeneous residual biomass, like agri-waste, control reduction of carbohydrates and lignins, all these things are well known. So you can go for combinational biochemistry. So chemical biology and biotechnology of carbohydrates and proteins. Our microalgae, we are doing research in ICT also in this area. So what you have microalgae and macroalgae, what sort of products you can make? There's a lot of chemical engineering, you know, a lot of biotechnology, you know, a lot of chemistry involved in this area. So yes, our protein engineering and petroleum biorefinery. So creation of proteins, especially enzymes with newer enhanced properties by direct manipulation of their genes. So imagine that you must have understanding of biochemistry and biotechnology. And so we can use that kind of thing. So biocatalyst and director evaluation. Development multifunctional of biofactory using the rhodococcus as a host. So you imagine, and this uh, racemic separation like ketoprofen, RNS. So these are separations. So are you having chiral, chiral selectivity? And above all, we must do LC analysis. Chemical engineers must do life cycle analysis of everything. 
and we must have this so chemical engineers new role is bringing new technologies to commercial function technology having origins in scientific discoveries on atomic and molecular level the molecular world and uh, the chemical engineers are skilled in integrating product design and process design and process control and optimization and risk management during this uh, covid uh, lockdown several accidents took place in industry very sad and that means the risk and hazard analysis is a very important thing for uh, chemical engineers and their skills are needed to develop genetic engineering as a manufacturing tool to create new biomolecular devices for information storage and handling so in the case of food the tillable land is going down and 2025 one hectare will feed only five people in 1950 you know only one hectare was good enough for two people 1960 that means the productivity has to be increased so how do you do that genetically modified food so this is where it is interesting yeah, already there are many pest resistant uh, you know you know this uh, traits are available and uh, the government of india is this 5 trillion dollar economy they are talking about this uh, herbicides pesticide in, in fact i am participating in one of those programs so you can see that biotechnology is going to help us in genetically modifying foods and chemical engineers will be at the forefront again so you see this is what is happening and water we require water because by 2030 the water resource group report that the worldwide water supply is likely to remain 30% by 2030 that will be the shortage so the intergovernmental panel on climate change ipcc says around 60% of the world population could experience severe water shortage in this is shortages this is where chemical engineering principles you know membranes reuse water reuse purification all those things are going to help and india will have a very big problem in water i am telling you that so desalination market we are huge market the global desalination where chemical engineering plays a very important role desalination technologies of course biotechnology and biomedicine healthcare industry chemical engineers can add a lot to this in fact perhaps many of you don't know in united states you can direct cannot directly become a medical doctor you must have one degree because there is certain age limit and many of the doctors in america are having chemical engineering degree the first degree is chemical engineering and then they have become doctor why because healthcare industry is very intimately related because all these functions of our organs they are chemical engineering principles absorption absorption desorption absorption with reaction membrane separation purification you know crystallization dissolution precipitation you know fluid flow heat transfer and name it all those things are there and if you look at the world's leading uh, diseases all these ten diseases you see this is where we can all a lot of this interesting part i will jump gears and go to inorganic chemistry because inorganic chemistry although people think only organic chemistry no inorganic chemistry is equally important because all these catalysts all these materials these are inorganic in nature many of them and therefore you will have nano size multifunctional compounds clusters and we need to understand their relations between structure and function okay so this so we have anti sense technology we have anti sense drugs we are and also the patterns on anti sense technology you can see how many are there and so from gene to glyco conjugates so you see sensor capacitors membranes electrodes catalysts actuators is is carbon nanotubes so carbon nanotubes can give a lot of things to us okay so you can functionalize them and you can have graphene and graphene based materials so graphene is the miracle that could revolutionize our world and there are many many things in literature on graphene okay so i won't go into that so what i want to go towards the end of my lecture is beyond the molecular frontier there are many discoveries which are from atom to atmosphere there are interfaces between biology and chemical chemistry and the these sciences and now you add to that environmental science electronic medicine physics 
and therefore the challenges will be forever and i said change challenge and opportunity and there will be a lot of opportunities in future so whether it is nanomaterials or supramolecular chemistry or nanotechnology the chemistry of future will be interdisciplinary like chemical engineering so chemistry will have computer science physics biology medicine they will have molecular material science molecular nanotechnology inorganic computational chemistry physical chemistry environmental chemistry chemical biology organic chemistry medicine so the chemistry of future will be all interdisciplinary it will not be today's chemistry what we are studying and as far as chemical engineering four from atom to atmosphere you can see it is connected with every other discipline science discipline or engineering discipline whether it is green technology nanotechnology you know biology electrical engineering artificial intelligence and what not so because the borders of this have disappeared and chemical engineering can also work in tandem with many other things which this slide shows whether it is energy engineering or future devices sensors and advanced materials so what happens towards the end we have plants input we have processing systems we have bioprocesses we have modified chemistry we have current chemistry we have existing crops we have crop waste we have genetics modified genetics all this is going in one direction and that is a technology front and by 2020 we said many things will happen it has already happened so so you can see that we have we are working in a area and this is where i would also like to tell you because we are generating lot of waste whether it is waste of material waste of energy and we have to worry about it in the so called linear economy what happens you take extract from land air or water something then you do physical or chemical processing or combination you make chemicals materials products and you convert them into also energy or fuels and ultimately at the end of the cycle you dump it the cycle is over and what that means it means pollution of the land air and water that is the so called linear economy in the circular economy we don't do that we will make the same things we will make remake things we make different products so chemical engineering will have lot of this scope in recycle in the circular economy in fact all these principles which you are teaching in the courses whether it is reaction engineering separation transport or you know materials and material of construction and what not uh, energy optimization all these things are going to be very important in this circular economy so what are my conclusions my conclusions are chemical engineering has been evolving continuously and an addition to the main uh, you know traditional jobs chemical engineers are at the forefront of every innovation there is nothing like pure science or for that matter engineering all boundaries have disappeared adoption is the new mantra and chemical engineers must do that adoption adaptation and adoption is the new trinity like change challenge and opportunity chemistry continues to evolve from its from its historical focus on molecular structure reactivity and synthesis to take on the challenges of making small and large molecules and each systems of molecules with tailored properties and functions so chemistry has bestowed chemical engineering with the soul of its functions this is what we should know so chemical engineering requires improved theoretical and analytical tools as well as innovative and new synthetic strategies given the remarkable array of functions found in biological molecules mother nature offers help in this regard through an approach to synthesis that seamlessly interfaces biology and chemistry chemical engineering has benefited from both physical and biological sciences chemical engineers must become highly proficient in these tools and the concepts of modern biology without sacrificing their traditional understanding of transport phenomena reaction engineering process safety scale of economics economies and process economics the application of chemical principles to biological phenomena has revealed new opportunities for instance drug discovery and you must have also realize over the last 10 15 years many of the departments of chemical engineering in the western world have changed their names to chemical and biological engineering or biomolecular engineering just to show that 
they are very close to those disciplines and chemical engineers are working in that discipline. So the growing sophistication in the methods used to produce and identify molecules that engage in distinct interactions with one or a few components of a more complicated and dynamic biological milieu. Cleaner and grid and pro processes based on cleaner and safer reagents are highly desirable when you have the night tightening environmental regulations. Sustainable development and responsible care are most important issues for the industry. Catalysis with renewable feedstock is the way ahead in developing green, smart, and economical processes. The use of biomass, carbon dioxide, water, air, and sunlight will lead to sustainability. I give a separate lecture on carbon dioxide conversion into chemicals and materials and how it is going to help us in future. So nothing is best but wealth. New types of catalysts, reactors, and processes will be required to process intensification and waste minimization. Understanding the role of pores, particles, and interfaces will help in developing cleaner and greener processes. So ultimately, human body engineering. What is the role of chemical engineering? You look at any of these things in our body, we can replace them. And everywhere, chemical engineers will have a role. Whether it is contact lenses, artificial eyes, artificial heart, wall, pacemakers, metals, combination, biomaterials, artificial lips. So if today's man has many things replaced. Somebody may replace it for beautification of the face to look good. Well, you know, the, uh, the lips may be thin or the teeth may be nice. And you can imagine all sorts of things are being developed. So what it means? In our body, we will have in future 95% of those body parts may be replaced by synthetic parts. In fact, just yesterday, uh, I found one very nice, uh, you know, WhatsApp message that the lady was keeping her heart outside, one uh, lady in UK, and, uh, and she's, she's being given that supply through a machine. Her heart is outside her body. So if you look at it, that means what we were born naturally, we are replacing with synthetic materials. We, our kidneys may go outside and do that function of dialysis because it is based on chemical engineering principles. So everything is possible. So I'm, because I'm also a religious man and I give a lot of le lectures on religion, I will give you one quote on Bhagavad Gita. What does it say Bhagavad Gita? And that is related to Atma, the soul. And that is what Lord Sri Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita to Arjun when he wants to fight the war with his kids and kins. And he says, Nainam chandanti na shastrani, Nainam dahati pavaka, na chakledayanta apu, na shoshayiti maru. The soul is not weighed by water. It cannot be burned by fire. It cannot be clothed. It cannot be dried with wind. It moves from one body to another body. Now imagine our 95% of our synthetic body already has moved from our original soul has moved 95% at least. I say it as a joke, but what it means, it is possible to extend life. The human life, natural life is 150 years. You can live without any problem. And in fact, when we read scriptures and all, we say that many people live very long life because they never abuse their life, their, their life, their body. So, so human body can live beyond, you know, this natural hundred years, which we are talking about. So when we understand the chemistry of life and create biocompatible materials and processes, death will not be a problem. Life will be because you don't know what you would like to do. Maybe you finished one career as a professor and another you become some you know, cricket player or something else. It is all possible. And chemical engineering will continue to play its role in this evolution. So that is very nice thought. That, that is why I said chemical engineering is a very versatile profession, very accommodative profession. It can accommodate, it can change its colors without losing its fundamental principles of reaction engineering. Maybe you will go to micro reactors and you apply that concept in your body or heat transfer problem inside the body or the kidney and fluid flow and microfluidics and whatnot. 
all those things you will continue to do so chemical engineering is not going to vanish so long as there is life on earth and that is why i said god is a chemical engineer and now you understand why i said it so with this few words i just want to show the slide of my students who are currently working in my lab and the endowments which supported me so far with these few words i'll be very happy to answer any queries if there are any queries through the chat or uh, you know amish you can take the questions and ask me i'll be very happy to answer them thank you so much thank you so much uh, indra shell university for giving this opportunity to me to talk to your students and others and faculty members and those uh, non chemical engineers at least there will be some marriages of chemical engineers you know if they were not finding any girl these days <laughs> uh, they will find thank you very much thank you so much sir in fact the very catchy phrase uh, that is god is a chemical engineering had arrested my attention to i am a having a non chemical background and especially when you said you know this uh, god is a chemical i was really convinced and i am sure you know the participants and attendees might be convinced as well and in fact it has given me a new uh, scope you know for research also the marital uh, concord or harmony between you know <laughs> the chemical engineers and all. i i was really convinced you know let me you know uh, do research on this because i have a humanity background uh, very very well you know sir elaborated illustrated um, especially from micro to macro level its applications and its scope uh i wish you know the uh, this uh, session would have been you know conducted uh, very early perhaps to you know arrest and hook you know so many uh, potential you know uh, students for our chemical engineering branch in fact i feel you know it was so convincing and so appealing in a very lucid and candid manner that i wish you know i should also take admission in chemical engineering <laughs> You are still welcome. <laughs> I, as I told you that you can always follow another vocation. You know? Yes, and it was it had a very futuristic approach also that <laughs> the future of this uh, profession, as especially sir. You so, know, uh, I, I crack a lot of jokes in my classes to make the students understand things, and I give them uh, real life examples. You uh, know, so, in, but, in yeah. the kitchen. You know, in the kitchen, kitchen, the mother cuts the vegetables in a particular way. why because the mass transfer rate is very high in that direction okay uh, so that that you know she may be doing it unknowingly but we now know why she is doing yes uh, so so this kind of thing or, maybe or, or yeah traveling by train i i tell them uh, what is the plug flow or a back mix traveling by train you cannot by you cannot turn around you have to the people just throw you out in mumbai so that is plug flow and students <laughs> appreciate that because they, they are not able to move when they travel in that crowded train you, you, if they are lost they are lost only <laughs> at least i can see sir live examples of uh, uh, people with chemistry background having lasting marriage uh, you know with uh, yadav sir over that here amish sir is here yeah <laughs> yeah chemistry guys chemical engineers they have lasting marriages lasting yeah, i so uh, good news and bad news marrying <laughs> <laughs> second time <laughs> or having an affair <laughs> so uh, uh, i i uh, uh, change the spotlight to amish sir who will yeah, be amish. telling the course of uh, discussion and yadav yeah, sir yeah. is also joined now yes i would like to say yadav sir would like to say something then i will because he should sure. gd there is no doubt it is always pleasure to listen to you always <laughs> thank you <And> thank you <laughs> listening to you you make me chemist more confident that oh. <laughs> so, so it was more chemistry than the chemical engineering i can say <laughs> so so that's why the, i think we become complementary to each other yeah. it was excellent and i'm very thankful that you agreed and uh, i thought namrata said that it should have been done little earlier but there was earlier to because we wanted to invite physically to you. okay but because of this uh, i talked to you also and you agreed that you come physically you will come maybe later on so yeah i'll come when things become normal 
right right normal, yes. normal things i got so, you know uh, now that is dependent on guys pharmaceutical guys when are you going to give vaccine to us <laughs> <laughs> but one thing i can tell you there are more participants this way than the actual yeah, yeah that is true huh that is true this webinar normally you have to hunt for you know audience when some speaker comes okay five say then students are caught from their lab then brought to the hall here those who are really interested because they feel close to the speaker right. they can read the slides very well on their computer screen which normally somewhere they sit and they can't see the slide properly right the letters are small how many participants were there on the, this one sir it you was know? 92 now they have been reduced to 75 yeah, but then the one thing that but facebook is not included yeah facebook is not considered in this number sir facebook is different so it will be much more than that yeah it will be around 250 ah oh, around very 250. good i am i am a lucky person <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks yadav and uh, amish bhai conclude yours yeah I... yeah yes sir i i would like to conclude this uh, webinar saying a, a big thank to uh, dr gd gd yadav sir and uh, yes uh, sir i do believe that our chemical engineering starts from kitchen and this is the best place where you can understand all the chemical engineering operations may it be distillation may it be mechanical operation or may it be unit operations or may it be reaction engineering everything you can understand total reflux half reflux partially reflux or without reflux all kind of operation or distillation in the kitchen itself so that is one era and uh, yes you have described the complete profile where chemical engineer can work and now it is the role of chemical engineer is 180 degree change earlier it was very conventional and matching with the chemist in the industry but now it is totally different and yes sir it is a multidisciplinary application of chemical engineering if you think about the latest cars in automobile industry how they increase their uh, average is by reducing the weight of the car fibers frps these are possible just because of the chemical engineering otherwise it would not have been possible if you think about the space shuttles possible just because of the chemical engineering the materials are there and when you study the material science you have to understand the chemicals components compositions of those materials their characteristic and how they will behave under various climatic conditions under various temperature that will make a difference so it is a very nice ex examples that you have given even if i think about the computer and it industry people are thinking that now it is it era no behind it era you have chemical engineering that what also i can say if someone say pollution then it and computer this it industry is creating huge amount of pollution i can say because see it is not a data server room it is a server building now if you think about the facebook or the google or the yahoo or the amazon it is a server building and that requires 24 by 7 uninterrupted power connection how they will get the power connection from the thermal or the fuel power stations and how when they run this power station definitely pollution will be there without chemical engineering this is not possible people are thinking about the chips pcbs polymers are there chemical engineering is there and that makes it possible so you are 100% right sir without chemical engineering nothing is possible may it be human body or may it be kitchen the best chemical engineering guide for us and for as a chemical engineer uh, for prospective student i would like to say that chemical engineering is having a wide and very huge area as a future study as a job prospects also and as an entrepreneur also in all the aspects you will get the best chances and opportunities as a chemical engineer and uh, now mukesh ambani is a chemical engineer is a icit graduate see the best <laughs> example sir <laughs> the best example sir and all, the, all those guys running geo are chemical engineers yes sir geo yeah, see, this is this is very interesting are, fact icit icit graduates are they this is very interesting fact that all these geo uh, workers i can say they are person who are running this chemical engineer so you can see the connection now it is not related to one branch it is a multidisciplinary branch it will be just engineering that's what we need to say rather than chemical mechanical or ict or 
other thing. It is just yeah, yeah. an engineering. Yeah. And you pick up the packs, you pick up the packages, which subject you would like to study, which is related to your interest, which can satisfy your interest. If you are interested in computer engineering and if you are learning chemical engineering, you can satisfy your passion for chemical engineering in modeling simulation. Even if you are going with pharmacy, you can satisfy with the simulation of molecule development. So these all things are possible even in chemical engineering also. Thank you very much, sir, for highlighting all this era, all these things. Thanks a lot, sir. Nevertheless, sir. Oh, yeah. think... I'm sorry. Meanwhile, my wife called and I had to take her call because she was stuck somewhere. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> I, I said, otherwise I will not get food in the evening. <laughs> See? <laughs> GD. Uh. GD, that's oh. our marriages are long lasting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are obedient husbands. <laughs> because you people know the chemistry of relations also, chemistry of economy yeah. also. Nevertheless, no, no, no I, I was cutting her short, but she called three times. So I said something urgent. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I wanted to make the, this thing, uh, you know, but I said anyway. <laughs> okay. Chemistry of emotions also. Uh, nevertheless, it is. Do you know to... something? Uh, our thoughts are chemistry. Yes. If you know that they are chemical reactions. Yes. If, you, if you study brain, uh, everything, the signal, they are chemical reactions. Dopamine plays a very important role in human, human body. Dopamine. But that is why your statement justifies that God is a. Chemical engineer. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, you Adjusting. know, so once professor this doctor R. Chidambaram, yeah. Chidambaram said, "Are no, Yado, you are why not physicist?" I said, "You know, traditionally Einstein was a physicist, so they got a hero. So everybody thought physicists are great. <laughs> okay, but the fact of the matter is this: chemistry and what happens in human body and all." I said, it does not mean, I'm not saying other disciplines are unimportant. Actually, I'm talking about the versatility of the profession yeah. where God is God is versatile. If you believe in that concept, right? If you yeah. don't, you are... Uh, Chemist yeah. only made him popular. Chemist yeah. only made Einstein popular. Yeah, that is true. But, <laughs> but, but that time, you know, people, but like people know... Uh, uh, Einstein, but not many people can identify few chemists and say he, this guy is a chemist. Right. Like they will talk about Newton, they will talk about Einstein, okay, or Maxwell, but they may not talk about somebody who is a Woodward or something like that. Okay, they they will not because they don't know. They don't right. know. Except maybe Mary Curie. And <laughs> Sir, we got uh, positive feedback from uh, uh, attendee participants also that it was very interesting. And uh, nevertheless, this is going to catalyze again our admission process and will be, you know. Uh, yeah, because main... you might have recorded this, no? So, yes. you know, like which I gave you one reference on my that, uh, that YouTube uh, uh, TEDx program. They can see it. there are many of those. Right. Quite a, quite a lot of my videos are there on the, on the, internet, on the internet. Thanks, you thanks a lot, sir. Yes, thanks thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. Stay safe, stay home, sir. Yeah, you all should. I really enjoyed. As if I'm sitting in front of you, only <laughs> thing is I'm not eating biscuit and taking tea. <laughs> 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 that I have to do on my own now because my wife has gone to her office. <laughs> good, good. Well, I really enjoyed. Huh? Yes, excellent. Yes. And, uh, okay, okay, Judy. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Yeah.